It's never a good sign when fruit flies are out living prime ministers. I'm sure you heard, but after 45 days in office, Prime Minister Truss has definitely gone out with a bang rather than a sizzle. So let's get into the economic what went wrongs of this episode. Now overall, her problem, mixed signals. What happens when you got one hand stimulating and the other hand pulling things back? You end up with a bunch of very confused investors assuming the worst. Basically, investors were looking at the situation and making a bet that the taking hand would definitely outlast the hand that was given. And what do you know, 45 days later, they were proven correct. So when Liz Truss assumed the prime ministership, inflation very high, and the Bank of England, Great Britain's Federal Reserve, was fighting that inflation by tightening the economy. Pretty bog standard stuff for this channel when we're talking about Federal Reserves. Now where things get special is Liz Truss's response to this situation. You see, she came into office with a plan. All right, we're gonna fight the central bank and we're gonna stimulate this economy. Now remember, this is a conservative prime minister, so stimulation really meant tax cuts for the wealthy and rolling back a whole bunch of corporate taxes while deregulating industry. Well, the new British Prime Minister Liz Truss has laid out a terrific supply-side economic growth plan, which looks a lot like the basic thrust of Kevin McCarthy's commitment to America plan. Let's start with Truss. She is slashing tax rates and deregulating energy. I just love it. Ah, <sighs> age to perfection. Now all those changes were scheduled to come into effect at the beginning of the new year. So alright, with stimulation still months out, how did promising future stimulus screw things up today? Well before this announcement, the pound was already taking a pounding. This action was the economic equivalent of making a public speech saying, <coughs> at the end of the year we're gonna start punching holes in this already sinking ship. What investors heard was, if you think things are going to start getting worse soon, well, find a lifeboat now. Put another way, if you could confidently say that a stock is going to lose half its value next week, well, you'd probably sell it at a loss now to avoid eating that 50% drop a week out. Everyone does that exact same thing and what do you know, that 50% drop snaps into place today. Now, in general, the stimulus confusion led to a whole bunch of selling, not very much buying, and red across the map. So how do you track the selling of the British pound? Well, enter the British bond market. You see, bonds are basically IOUs from the government. Give me 10 bucks now and I'll give you 11 bucks 10 years out. If you're looking at the future $11 10 years down the road right now and realizing that hmm, by then in an inflation ravaged world that 11% might not be worth the paper it's printed on, we're well, going to sell that promissory note now for as much cash as you can get today. This is where the stimulation hand and the pulling back hand not being in coordination really started to lead to a collapse. You see, on one side you have investors dumping their bonds because they were seeing bleaker inflation ravaged future with all this promised stimulus coming down the pipe, and on the other hand you had the central bank's quantitative tightening. So alright, let's take a step back here for a second. During the pandemic, the Bank of England was pumping money into the economy by buying up these IOU bonds. Basically they were saying, Hey banks, you have all this cash tied up in promises for future money. How about we take some of that tied up money and release it by buying those promissory notes for cash right now. You get the cash and we're just going to hold on to these things to their eventual payout. Lend it out and well, let's all get stimulated. Now the problem for the United Kingdom today was, now that inflation was ravaging the economy, nobody wanted to be pumping fresh cash into the economy anymore. So you have this entity with all sorts of IOUs that are going to eventually expire that they bought to try to inject fresh cash into the economy during a downturn, and they're now trying to get money out of the economy. What to do? What to do? What to do? 
I know, let's reverse the flow. Let's start selling these bonds, taking money out of the economy, and tying up cash in vaults with these IOUs. So now you have the central bank hitting the sell button, private investors hitting the sell button, and basically overnight the markets turned into a swirling void dragging down the expected future value of the pound as well as its current value. Now the story keeps going and oh boy does it get a lot bleaker, but before I continue I want to emphasize a side point that makes this relevant to everybody watching. You see, America right now is dancing on a very similar blade. Our Federal Reserve is unwinding their bond holdings into a market that isn't super jazzed about buying them all. Big difference between America and the United Kingdom is there hasn't been a similar inflection point to lead a lot of private investors to dump their holdings onto a market with very few buyers. So now back to the United Kingdom's economic adventure story. You see, you got the government announcing stimulus while the central bank is selling their bonds, leading to private investors dumping their bonds on top of that already growing pile, and just a whole bunch of people are looking to sell and offload everything they're holding, and no one is buying them. Now this all led to a very sudden drop in the value of bonds, and very sudden drops, not good. So alright, bonds are down, who cares? Well, two groups in particular. First, the investment group. You see, bonds are basically the financial entity that stopped getting invited to the party by stocks years ago because they're too boring. You're investing in the promise of $10 a few years out, great! Because of their perceived predictability, I mean worst case scenario you're going to end up with that promised $10 at the end of those dang years, most bonds are owned by retirement funds. Now that fact has a magnifying effect on this problem because there exists a thing called margin calls and they can magnify any sudden drop. You see, bulk buying bonds is a bit like buying a house. You make a down payment and then you borrow cash from a brokerage to buy the rest. That house goes up in value and everyone wins, yay! That house goes down in value on the other hand and that lending body is gonna start sweating. You borrowed cash from me to buy this stuff and now the overall value of what you bought is getting pretty pretty close to the amount we lent you to buy it all. You gotta make an additional cash deposit at my brokerage so that I can use it as collateral. Or alternatively, I'm just gonna sell everything you have and use the money we raised to pay myself back. So how do you raise money to get that cash deposit? Simple sell other bonds in your fund that weren't bought on margin. Now of course those sales are going to push the value of bonds down more, meaning that you have to give more money to the brokerage to stay in compliance with the margin requirements, and uh oh the compliance you maintained by selling those bonds pushed the value down, gotta give more money, gotta sell more bonds to get that money, and now we're in what economists call a doom loop. The value of bonds continued to plummet because pension funds were selling additional bonds to avoid having their entire positions liquidated by their brokerages. Now this was a terrible sight to see if you were a UK citizen planning on retiring anytime in the next 20 or 30 years. Now the other party that was sweating bullets was the UK government themselves. You see, the entire time we've been talking about bonds on this episode, we haven't yet focused on who's taking in the cash now and promising payments later on. That group, well they would be the federal government, and these IOUs, well they're actually measured as government debt. Now this whole tax cut plan was to be paid for by deficit spending. What that meant was, you had investors dumping their bonds, the Bank of England unwinding their bond purchases, pension funds selling their bonds to stay in compliance with their brokerage rules, and now you have the UK government coming out and saying, bonds for sale, bonds for sale, get your fresh bonds here, we need to fund this new tax cut program with additional federal debt. Give us $10 now and we'll give you $11 in 10 years. What? No takers? Alright, how about $9 now for those $11 in the future? Eight? Come on guys, we gotta keep the lights on here. 
Now, in order to keep the government even open, the United Kingdom needed to continue to sell new debt to investors at pretty low numbers. The future price tag associated with the United Kingdom government trying to keep their lights on for the last few weeks has been brutal. So what's the solution to all this? Well, two moves. First, just hit edit undo a few times and say, hey investors, whew, the last month it's been crazy for us. The queen died, we announced some policies we didn't really mean, don't worry we fired that person. Oh, let's just pretend that nothing happened. You're just hoping for a great British shake off. Now the other thing they did was have the Bank of England play the UNO reverse card and just buy back a metric ton of bonds that were on the open market, providing some much needed demand as well as raising the prices and stabilizing the bond markets overall. Now this move successfully restored the value of the bond market while unfortunately inserting a whole bunch of additional fresh and unwanted inflationary cash into the United Kingdom economy. At the end of the day, the United Kingdom is back in stable condition again, with the biggest losers being, first, anyone who sold between the massive drop and the Federal Reserve's massive reverse on bond buying, and second, well, overall just the fight against inflation in the United Kingdom because there is a whole bunch of new cash that was injected into their economy when the Federal Reserve started buying all these bonds to increase demand again. Also, Liz Truss's legacy. Her biography, Out of the Blue, is set to hit stores in a few weeks. Good luck there. Now as an American watching this whole system, I'm again reminded of a whole bunch of articles I've been reading for the last few months stating that we in America are set up for a very similarly disastrous bond collapse. It is a tight bond market here with the Federal Reserve unwinding their holdings, the Federal Government borrowing more money and handing out fresh bonds, and not a whole lot of buyers. We just haven't seen anyone like the investors sell now fuse. Until next time, thank you and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube, I'd like to thank my patrons over here for helping me put out my videos. If you want to support independent nonpartisan news looking into the overlooked, join this growing list of executive individuals by clicking on the link in the description. Also remember to give me a thumbs up if you like what you saw, subscribe, ring that bell so the freedom will continue to ring, and lastly, as always, thank you for watching.